Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we just finished up uh, National Small Business Month. And I just wanna say uh, this year, it's even more important that we step up and uh, support our small businesses. Thanks, Voss. Thank you everyone else for being here. Um, and thanks for having Cruz be a part of this conversation. There are a lot of people in every community in need of help getting around, getting food, getting medicine, and to see a whole fleet of AVs in every city providing that kind of service, it could be a game changer for millions. Um, so now let's start with our panelists. Uh, first, we have Henry Karnilowitz. He is a legacy small business uh, advocate. Uh, he was also um, the longtime president of the Council District of Merchant Associations. And um, he's now the VP of the Soma Merchants Association as well. So I've been in South of Market area for, oh my God, I think probably over 20 years, 89. So maybe it's even more than that. Um, and uh, so now I've been involved initially with the South of Market Project Area Committee, the advisory body to the redevelopment agency. Um, talking about pivoting from the, the way we used to do business, the way we do it now because of COVID. And it was, it was amazing how rather quickly how we got to create these shared spaces. And they've been a huge asset for a lot of small business. They really, really have. And what else it's shown actually, people always talk about small business in particular, about how we need parking. We need parking, we need to drive, we need to do all sort of. And we've discovered that actually that really isn't all that bad. Today, you can go to any place in a city where they have shared space and you will still find parking. And why is that? The younger generation is not driving that much. They're going on scooters and all that. And what else? Cruise, autonomous cars. That's the future. That's the future we're looking at. We're looking at the future where we won't have to drive anymore. We won't have to have cars anymore. We won't have to pollute the city anymore. And also with accidents. The accidents we have in particular south of Mark and the Tenderloin, a lot of accidents out there for all sorts of reasons. But this is where I think it's going to be a huge uh, game changer and how we live and how we do, especially for small business, where you'll be able to get a, a cruise car to drop you off at your favorite gift shop, your art gallery, your, your uh, supply house, your restaurant, whatever. You don't have to worry about putting anybody in a parking spot or getting towed or what sort of stuff. And I, I see we have a very, very bright future. Um, the next person I'd like to introduce is my friend, Christian Martin. He's the executive director of the Soma West Community Benefit District. We started in uh, technically in 20, late 2019, but we launched services in March of 2020. And I'm sure you can imagine what that was like. Um, so our first year was about growing our um, internal operation, um, making partnerships with the community and um, setting the, the people and processes in place to provide for the continuous improvement of the neighborhood. So what that looks like, uh, we have about 19 cleaning ambassadors, one homeless outreach ambassador. Uh, we work seven days a week um, and increasingly uh, later into the evening, we have a night shift now that's from 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. And we do cleaning and maintenance, uh, picking up trash, needles, feces, uh, bulk items, removing graffiti, basically anything that um, is uh, negatively affecting the uh, cleanliness and safety of the community. Well, so now we're gonna kick it over to uh, the Tenderloin. My friend, uh, Rene Colorado is here. He's the director of the Tenderloin Merchants Association. Uh, we founded the association in uh, November of 2019 in response to actually some attacks on our uh, Asian business owners. Um, and we've been hard at work ever since. We've got to implement our shared spaces, open streets. It's where we close uh, the streets on Larkin Street on two blocks, the six and 700 block. Um, and we, we've done outdoor dining with that. Uh, and we've also been piloting our ambassador program. Um, we've developed this program uh, with direct input and help from the Tenderloin Community Benefit District. And so far we've seen uh, the, the results of our ambassador program have been amazing. Uh, we've seen near reductions of 100% in uh, drug dealing, open air drug use, and sidewalk obstructions. Um, we're really seeing that cars are not tied to the economic 
vitality of um, self-driving cars, that is, it's not tied to the economic vitality of small businesses. Um, public transportation is, I think, in the future, in my personal opinion, it's uh, self-driving vehicles where you take the person completely out of the equation. Um, so I'm excited. I'm excited to see that. I, we welcome that in the Tenderloin. Like I said, it, it goes hand in hand with what we're trying to build here. Um, so I'm pretty excited. Thank you. Um, next up is my friend, uh, uh, Bob Goldfarb. He is the president of the Leather and LGBTQ Cultural District in San Francisco. Uh, the, the cultural districts were created by the San Francisco supervisors to help mitigate the effects of gentrification. Uh, the Leather and LGBTQ Cultural District uh, in SOMA was legislated into existence by the city supervisors and the mayor in 2018. Uh, the managing organization by the same name was formalized in August of that year. Uh, the leather and LGBTQ community began to locate in Soma starting in the early 60s. Uh, it was an industrial and residential area at the time where no one really minded lots of people showing up in leather gear and on their motorcycles. And our job is to maintain the spaces and venues for our communities to meet and maintain those social connections. Uh, we do that by working with existing community businesses, developers, community groups, by holding events and establishing placemaking features to highlight our history and connection to the area. Our next speaker is uh, Katie Conway. She is the director of the Tenderloin uh, Museum. Yeah, the museum opened in 2015 with the mission of uncovering the lost history of the Tenderloin as well as celebrating the vibrant present day community. Women's independence, transgender rights, LGBTQ rights, sex worker rights, housing rights. These were all socially radical ideas at the time that the Tenderloin community was championing them. And as a specific example, the gay civil rights movement began in the Tenderloin in the early 1960s before this kind of organizing was happening anywhere else in the country. Finally, uh, we have our friend uh, Andrew Robinson. He's the director of the East Cut Community Benefit District. We have both uh, a, a business and employee uh, sector that's about 100,000 individuals a day. We also have a residential population of about 15,000 people in the neighborhood. And that, but what you may not know about the East Cut is that it's also delivering a lot of the city's affordable housing. 35% of all of those uh, towers you see rising on the skyline uh, are below market rate housing. Uh, coming very soon, actually just approved yesterday, um, is a, pro a project to activate the former temporary terminal site. It's a, the last empty uh, big parcel in the neighborhood that will be developed into housing and another park in the neighborhood. Uh, some of the things that I've heard from merchants and other conversations is that it, it would be great to have more connection you know, across different merchant corridors across the city. Um, so I think just having an alternative service that's affordable, reliable, um, and again, one that operates in an equitable fashion um, are just a few of the ways that merchants will definitely, you know, in my opinion, be able to benefit from autonomous vehicles. So thank you all for joining. Thank you to our great panelists.